know, from the moment you crash land into this planet, we are all looking for something. Where did this all come from? What on earth am I here for? Where am I going? What happens when I die? We want answers to our... Welcome to St. Lawrence O'Toole Church for the celebration of the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Susan and I will be the lector for this Mass. The celebrant is Father Tom. Today's second collection will be for Capital Projects. This Mass is being offered for Frank and Mary Khaleesi. Please see the bulletin for announcements. Please turn off all cell phones and electronic equipment before the Mass begins. Please rise and join in singing our gathering hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. All creatures of our God and King, up your voices and let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beams, soft silver moon that gently gleams. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia. so strong, new clouds above that sail along. Oh, praise Him, alleluia, fair rising morn in praise rejoice, stars nightly shining find a voice. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Yeah. 
Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's time for Kids' Chapel. I think it's going to be a, a small group this morning, but come on down, guys. Come on down, all-stars. More fun for you guys. Okay. Even though I always say you're going to miss a really good homily, but that's okay. Yeah. Come on down, guys. All right. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Go ahead, guys, go. All right. And our helpers, of course. Okay, good. We've got a few more takers. That's good. When I told them they didn't have to listen to the homilies, like, oh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go. Okay, guys. Good. All right. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for a crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. you transplanted, you drove away the nations and planted it, put forth its foliage to the sea, it shoots as far as the river.
why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays its waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go there. That will remain. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, there is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death 
and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, did you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. How are we doing? You know, I, I was going to mention this to you. I think I just think it's good for you to know. Um, I'm. I have the possibility. A number. Of, a number of us down at the seminary um, are using an urgent care where we can get a a rapid test for for COVID, um, and I'm doing that. Um, either on, fr I've done it twice now, either on a Friday or a Saturday morning before I come up here and we get our results in 20, in 20 minutes. So, just so you know, because you, can, you don't know where I am during the week, you know. So, um, I just want you to, want you to know that um, I'm doing that and if I'm not here on a Sunday, you'll, <laughs> God forbid, you'll know, you'll know why. But uh, just, I think it's, it's good for us to do that, just to give you that level of assurance too. We're doing what we can to stay safe and, and also keep each other healthy. Um, a little story. When I was a senior in high school, actually the summer before my senior year, um, I was getting very anxious about, I mean, just everything that was happening during senior year and I was going to be uh, um, president of a student body group and we had to organize the freshman dance and I had to get a DJ and I you know another myriad other things besides keeping the GPA up and applying to colleges and all that and I was you know res I was taking on a lot of responsibility I was, I was a senior and um, I was really feeling anxious about it so I called a uh, teacher who I would often confide in, and I'll never forget what she said. You know, she said, Tom, um, just think about the word responsibility for a second, okay? That presupposes the ability to respond. <laughs> okay. And I'll never, I'll never forget that. And she, you know, kind of talked me out of my anxiety and helped me to loosen up and just, you know, approach the whole thing with a little sense of humor and got me back in a, in a better place and everything was fine, thanks be to God. But, but that was it, you know, she was like, this is, yeah, this is not going to turn out well if you spend the rest of your summer getting anxious about this and, you know, so the ability to respond. Um, so the gospel here is, and the word of God is talking to us about bearing fruit. The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. So bearing fruit in our lives and bearing fruit from being responsible in our religious practice and all the other things and being virtuous people and all the fruit that our Lord is looking for. That's part of the message here. But Here's, here's my message, and this is where I think this is going to be kind of a different homily than I've, I've, I've given before. Um, at the risk of sounding like, you know, Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz, okay, this morning, I just want to remind us that we're not going to be in a good position to bear fruit, especially spiritually and in our spiritual lives, if we're not taking care of the vine, if we're not taking care of our own physical and emotional well-being. So part of the message this morning um, is to remind us of the connection between the spiritual and the emotional and the physical, okay? So anybody out there feeling a little extra stress these days? Yeah? Okay, yeah, I... This is what I'm talking about. These are unprecedented times, okay? And if, if, if we didn't already have enough stress in our lives um, before, 
you know, last February. Well, you know, things just, maybe we got a little reprieve during the summer, I hope, but anyway. And it just seems to me that over time, stress kind of compounds, doesn't it? It compounds itself. You know, we're, we're stressed because we're stressed. And <clears throat> I, I can't urge you enough and, and here's, uh, for, for those who have ears to hear this message, hear it, because I've told this to people in spiritual direction, I've told this to people in confession, and it's a message you need to hear. You have permission to take care of yourself, okay? I know there's some people out there trying to be Superman, there's some people out there trying to be Wonder Woman, you're trying to do, okay? You have God's permission <laughs> to take care of yourself. And I say that especially to those of you and probably a number of you out there who find yourselves in kind of extraordinary positions. Why? Because you're taking care of mom who's got Alzheimer's. Your primary caregiver for someone or for a spouse or for a special needs child. Okay. Well, guess what? The more we have on our plate, the harder we need to work to take care of ourselves. And sometimes if you're wondering, what the heck is going on in my spiritual life and why I can't seem to... I mean, it's because it's all connected. It's just like the ankle bone's connected to the knee bone, to the, you know, the physical, emotional, and the spiritual. And if we're not taking care of the vine, okay, if we're not taking care of the physical and the emotional, right, of course we're not going to be producing the fruit that we need to produce. Now, I, just to give you one little simple personal example of this, I, I found this out recently. And I hope you know that this preacher is always preaching to himself. So... If, you know, if my homilies help you, that's great, but I'm always, I'm always preaching to myself. I've, so, I've been dealing with the past, past four years with not, not crazy back pain, but annoying back pain, right? And, you know, it was, it, it, it got to the point two weeks ago where I'm like, okay, I need to do something about this. How did I know I need to do something about it? Because I finally realized that I'm living with a heating pad. I live with a heating pad. I take it with me when I travel. I was a year ago last June. I'm in Boynton Beach, Florida, South Florida, in June. It's 105 degrees out, right? I'm at a, I'm at a conference, and I'm sitting in my room blasting the AC with my heating pad on, you know, so it's like, okay, maybe it's time to do something about this. And, but the thing was, it was interfering with, it got to the point where it was interfering with my prayer. Like, I couldn't sit through a holy hour. I had to get up, I had to walk, and I got to move, and I got to stretch. And you've, you've seen me, I'm always, like, you know, doing this stuff. It's, you know, and so last week I finally, yeah, I finally got my appointment. I got a, a good reference. I got a orthopedic, and I went down, and okay, so we're finally doing something about it. Take your own pulse this morning, right? What do you need to do, first of all? So again, I'm going to sound like Dr. Oz, but when was the last time you had a physical? When was the last time you saw your hygienist? And of course, COVID has made all of this much more complicated, right? And notoriously, unfortunately, we, a lot of people, to their detriment, have been like putting off regular uh, health care checkups that they need. I hope I'm getting good point. I'm, I'm getting points from all the nurses here in the, uh, uh, in the audience this morning. But when was the last time you did that? Have you been putting it off? Okay. Simple things like that, taking care of ourselves. Um, a diet, exercise, walking. When was the last time, you know, why is it, by the way, that who made the rule that the only time we can really decompress is when we go, uh, maybe get a little vacation in the summer for a week, you know? And then who knows, because if, you're <laughs> if it's a family thing, you might need the vacation after the vacation to, to decompress. But who, 
what are we doing to decompress every now and then? Some of us, what, do you, what are you doing, what do you need to recharge your battery physically and emotionally? Some of, us, some of us need to take long walks. I'm a long walk person. Give me a beach. Give me the woods. But I do that regularly, right? I do that regularly. I try. I fight. So think of what you need to do tomorrow morning for your, for your first of all, physically, right? And sometimes we need to work this out with our spouse. Okay, how can we take better care of each other? How can we open up some space? When was the last time you, got, you gave yourself permission and you worked it out with family so that you could get in the car for a couple hours and go take a walk in the park? Okay. Give each other permission to do that. Our Lord wants you to do that. Take care of yourself. If you are in a position where you feel, you know, I don't have the support that I need, okay, um, first of all, ask our Lord for that support. Right? Well, you know, I'm taking care of mom and my, my brothers and sisters, they're, you know, they all live out of town and I'm the only one. Okay. It's okay to reach out to someone and say, I need some help, right? Talk to someone. That's, and that brings us to the whole emotional, psychological part. Sometimes when I, you know, I deal with my brother priests and I give retreats and talk to them, a question that I oftentimes pose to priests who are notorious for not taking care of their physical health, not taking care of sometimes of their emotional health, and that's what leads to problems sometimes, and that's what can lead to uh, alcoholism or obesity and other, other kinds of things. What do you need to support yourself? That's a good question for all of us. And sometimes it starts, it might start with Monday morning, just sitting down prayerfully, get, your, get some time, get a cup of coffee, sit down, right? What do I need to have the support that I need? Do I have friends that I can talk to? Do I have someone that I can, a confidant that I can kind of open my heart to? Do I have um, uh, a person, you know, God willing, a, a sibling, a friend, a cousin, an aunt, somebody that I, you know, a, a shoulder to cry on when I, when I need that? If I don't, and a lot of people bear the cross of kind of feeling that they don't have that, well, what can I do about it? See, that's the thing. We don't, fl we don't just throw in the towel and say, well, you know, I just don't have anyone. No. Where there's a will, there's a way. And where there's God's grace, there's a way. What do I need to do? See, a lot of this actually brings us to maybe another topic that we've been putting off. Some of this actually requires lifestyle change. To live a healthier physical emotional life so that we can live a better spiritual life so that we can bear the fruit right maybe what I need to do Monday morning with my cup of coffee in prayerfully in the presence of the Lord is start thinking about that what changes do I need to make okay so there's there's my challenge to you don't be afraid of having that conversation with yourself. Don't be afraid of asking the Holy Spirit, okay, Holy Spirit, I know this is a whole can of worms, but what changes do I need to make to my lifestyle to lower stress, open up more time for spiritual things, for prayer, maybe for adoration? Um, who do I need to reach out to? You know, what do I need to do? The, the lunch that I need to incorporate with my friends. Maybe to ask my spouse permission to go play a round of golf every now and then. Or maybe, heck, maybe we'll go figure it out and we can go play the round of golf together. You know, whatever, whatever we need to do, those good, healthy things. Give yourself permission to do that. That's, that's not selfishness. It's called self-care, okay? And then, guess what? When we start doing that, the spiritual actually starts working better for us. And sometimes what we need to do too is that the spiritual is also affecting the emotional and the physical. One of the best things we can do, just a reminder, especially because I'm going to be hearing confessions tomorrow night, 
uh, from four to seven if you want to take advantage of that. One of the best things we can do spiritually sometimes is to press reset. How do you press reset spiritually? You go to confession. That's what conf confession is, reset. Okay, all right, I'm messed up. I need to press reset. <laughs> And that's what we do. That's what confession is. It's great. And sometimes when you do that, then that kicks in. You know, I feel better emotionally. I feel, I f even feel better physically, right? So it's all connected. Pardon me for, you know, sounding like a self-help guru. But again, I'm talking, I'm talking to myself too. In this time of enhanced stresses, okay, Let's take care of ourselves, please. Take care of the vine so that the vine can bear fruit. And God will bless you for doing that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Now look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting in our Lord's goodness and providence and love, we now present our needs for our leaders that God keep them safe and healthy and give them the assistance of the Holy Spirit for true wisdom as they try to discern his will, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray especially this morning for uh, our president and first lady and for all those who continue to suffer the consequences of COVID that our Lord will strengthen them, free them and bring them health, we pray to the Lord that all Catholics approach this election season committed to voting according to a properly formed Catholic conscience. We pray to the Lord. That we will all feel the call to the Lord to serve him as our means permit in the poor and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling from the loss of employment, that they be blessed with fruitful work to provide for their families, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, and especially for Frank and Mary Khaleesi, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you invite us to trust in you always and to pray with confidence in your love and mercy. Give us confidence in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, 
Sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. Graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O oh Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, gracefully grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. of the world, grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my special.
rejoicing with the saints of God to sing eternal praise. Who be caritas est vera, est vera, Est vera, est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, today is the Feast of St. Francis. It just happens to fall on a, a Sunday today. And um, there will be blessing of pets, blessing of animals at one o'clock here, right out in front. So take advantage of that if you'd like to. Uh, next Sunday, October 11th, will be, uh, there will be another mass in the neighborhoods. That's turned out to be a very good thing. Uh, next Sunday will be at 3 p.m. at Fox Lane off Peach Lake Road. And the week after that, on, a, on the 18th, uh, there will be an outdoor mass at Tanetta Lake. And there's more information about all of that uh, in the bulletin. Speaking of the bulletin, just to, you know, take advantage. See the, um, the offerings, first of all, for adult faith formation. You'll see right smack dab in the middle of there something called the search. You might even get one of these cards. Um, I asked, I had to ask Alan at the beginning of the mass. Okay, what is that? And well, he told me. 
but I can't tell you because you're supposed to go online and figure out what it is. Okay, so, um, but again, it's another one, one of the offerings that, that we have. Um, anyway, take, take a look at that. And um, there's also a page in here just bringing to your attention all of the wonderful things that this parish, I think really in a, a way that's demonstrating a lot of leadership is just doing things online for parishioners and Father Rich helping parishioners. Um, on every day of the week there's something. Um, prayer aids and, and so on. Take advantage of these things, right? Again, our spiritual health, these are, special, these are aids that we have. Um, some of these can be done online. A lot of these are online. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean getting together, uh, but you, it, just take advantage, take a look at that. Um, obviously we have adoration going on now, and 24-7, um, which is wonderful, which is a huge achievement for this parish. And I already said I'll be hearing confessions tomorrow night, so um, go home and do something unstressful, okay? Just do something relax, relax decompress, enjoy this, enjoy this beautiful day. Let's continue to ask our Lord's special protection on our church and on our nation. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seek the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.